You know that realization whenever you see a famous person out and about going on with their life and you get the thought of, oh, they're just human too, a real person. That's exactly the same revelation I get every time I enter into the space of extreme overclocking. The hardware that's used is fundamentally the same as what I have in my system. And today's video, sponsored by Adata, was a pursuit in us trying to achieve a world record using their XPG Lancer Neon RGB DDR5 RAM. We got to get hands-on and experience what it's like to take something that's normally in a PC that's running Fortnite and crank it up to the limits of physics itself. So we had the pleasure of having Adata send out one of the best overclockers in the entire world, Doomed 83. And he took their equipment, slapped some liquid nitrogen on it, and we got to take part in something that only a few other people have ever done before in humanity. But as mentioned, that LN2 was being poured onto what is effectively this, the Lancer Neon RGB DDR5 RAM kit. The heat spreader was replaced to get contact with the copper LN2 pot, but when you keep yours on, you'll notice that it has 60% RGB coverage, being one of the most lit up sticks of RAM I've ever had the privilege of seeing in a PC. And even though it won't get you down to negative 196 degrees Celsius, it does have a heat dissipating coating on it to keep it cool, even as it runs at up to speeds of DDR5 8000, at least commercially, out of the box. You'll see that we got it way faster than that. And it's actually the world's first eco-friendly RGB DDR5 module, being made from 50% recycled plastic materials and has FSC certified packaging, with its carbon emissions being 72.5% lower. And while the Lancer Neon RGB was the star of this extreme overclocking rodeo, we'd also be remiss to not chat about the rest of the components that helped us on this journey. The Z890 motherboard, along with the Core Ultra 7265K CPU, were vital in getting the memory speeds as high as we did. You need the memory traces on the motherboard to be as close to the CPU socket with the memory controller to make sure that it's all working together in extreme fashions. And those were used alongside the Legend 900 Pro Gen 4 NVMe SSD, capable of read speeds of over 7,000 megabytes per second, which you're gonna need because you're booting into Windows a lot because you're crashing a lot because you're pushing it to the extremes of physics. And then you got the XPG Fusion power supply, capable of supplying 1,600 watts of power at titanium efficiency. And while we didn't need all of that juice for the RAM overclocking efforts, it'll certainly come in handy when Doom decides to overclock the CPU as well. So with all this equipment in hand, we embarked on a multi-day journey to attempt to set the record for memory frequency. And while you might be booting your system up with DDR5 6400 or even the top spec Blancer Neon RGB at DDR5 8000, we got our journey started at DDR5 12,000. That's what we booted at. We needed to hit over DDR5 12,800 to get the record, or as it'll show in the software, 6400 megahertz. But here's how all of that went. So we have a, a copper pot, is that right? On Correct, the... we have a copper pot on the uh, memory and a copper heat spreader on the memory. And then we have a huge slug of copper on the CPU itself. And then is this a 3D printed like pouring It's mechanism? just a funnel to okay. help me hit that pot because it's about that wide. Yeah, we need to get this down to temperature before we even turn on the system. Correct. So Correct. What, what temperature are we aiming for Um. Here? I'm looking for about minus 135 to minus 140 on the memory, and that's Celsius. And then I'll pull the CPU down to about minus 70 to minus 75. Okay, and that's what the numbers we're looking at right Correct. here. Correct, the top number is the memory, and the bottom number is the CPU. So now we're below zero already on the memory. How cold is liquid nitrogen? It's minus? Minus 196, 196. roundabout. Okay. This is about as cold as you typically get when it comes to overclocking, where liquid nitrogen cooling both the CPU as well as the memory, because we're trying to set a world record attempt with the XPG Lancer Neon RGB DDR5 RAM. Doom over here, Brian has been playing around with it. He's already gotten some good attempts, some high high numbers. Uh, we're gonna try to go a little bit further beyond, yes. uh, just for the sake of setting records, but we'll, we'll see what we accomplish. But Doom is a accomplished liquid nitrogen overclocker. He is currently ranked number three in the US, number five out of extreme overclockers. So he has a lot of experience, He's actually really good at this, and uh, I'm excited to have him here in the office helping us out with all this. So we're, we're minus 64 degrees Celsius on the 
uh, memory right now, and it's dropping quite quickly. Okay, so we got the memory down, we're at minus 97 Celsius right now, so now we're moving on to the CPU, which is now below zero. So also on the board, we have a graphics card that just <laughs> looks to be packed. That looks like a fish. Yes, it's, it's actually called the OC fish. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so that's just because we need uh, graphics we need, out. We need display out, and I don't want to be putting extra stress on the CPU using the iGPU. And this is nice because it just doesn't have a fan for, to stick my fingers in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're ready to turn on the system. We're at minus 134 on the memory, minus 73 Celsius on the CPU. So this little tool right here, we just have it connected to thermistors, is that Yes, the... yeah, K-type thermal probes. That's just so that we can monitor the temperature correctly. Which benchmark are we testing? So how do we... So this is literally just uh, CPU frequency, so we're, we're just using CPU-Z and trying to get a valid file. All right, there we go. You guys are gonna get to see a master overclocker at work messing around with the BIOS. We're going for 12,000 right away. So what what voltage are we looking to set the memory to to achieve this? Um, so right now I'm running about 1.7 volts. Now at home, if you're using the Lancer Neon, you're gonna be significantly under 1.7 volts. <laughs> do not try to do that yourself yes. at home. Yeah, you have to actually enable a, an overclocking mode in the BIOS to be able to go past 1.5 volts usually. So while we have a uh, custom heat spreader on the Lancer Neon, on RGB memory. The one that comes included when you're actually uh, using the RAM at home is actually done up pretty well to make sure that it's heavily set up for overclocking where the heat spreader has reduced temperatures by about 10%, making it a lot easier for overclocking to have. All right, so we booted in, we got 12. 12,000, yeah. 12,000 right away. And we're gonna try and push that a little further. Just All right. Now. So do you have to drop the temperatures more in order to accomplish that, or you just try to keep them stable? I'm trying to keep them stable because it, it kind of sweet spots. There's a, a specific area where it, it likes to sit. 60, 12,120. Oh, so you can just continue to increase the overclock with a button. Correct. Okay, so we don't have to go back into the BIOS. So we're at 6,120 megahertz, which because it's DDR, double data rate, you actually double that number to get the effective clock speed. So we're at 6,180, which is about 12,360. And then when, when it gets too far, it's just gonna freeze. It's gonna freeze. And then do you need to go back into the BIOS to tweak a few things? We'll just need to reboot for the okay. most part. I, I might try and boot a little higher. So do you tweak anything else like the cast latency or any of the sub yes, timings? Yes, yes. So uh, you have to, for going for maximum frequency above 6,000, you want to be very, very loose on your timings. So you see I'm running cast 62. So a lot of my sub timings are 127, 255, very high, way higher than you would run normally. Yeah, the cast latency on the kit that we have right now, it's 6,400 mega transfers, but it's cast latency 32. We're at 6,270 right now. So that's 12,000. Oh, he's just going too fast for me to keep calling out the numbers. <laughs> 6,300. 6, there we go. All right, well, we hit 6,300, 6,315, 6,330. So that's 12,660. We just hit. Yep, and I think we locked up, so. Okay, we locked up. It's, did, do you think we got the file? I don't think so, uh, okay. no, but that's okay. We at least got to 6330. Um, so I'm gonna try to boot a little higher this time. Because we booted in at 12 at previous. 12,000, and I'm gonna try and do 12,133. One of the cool things about working with a competent overclocker is that they already know the system kind of inside and out. So it's actually very easy for them to go in and just set it because they've already played around with the hardware so much that he knows it's eccentricities, where it's gonna have problems, where it's not, what needs to be changed. Whereas for me to hit 12,000, I wouldn't know the first thing about how to do that. And it would, it would be a much longer session, but uh, instantly we hit 12. All right, so we're at minus 140. You don't want it that cold. Uh, yeah, it's, it's right on the edge there. And if you look, you guys can see condensation's already kind of building on the pot. There we go. Starting at 12, 1, 3, 3 to boot in now. So now is the dance of extreme overclocking, trying to make sure the temperatures stay within range while you're also trying to tweak things, while you're also trying to make sure that you're capturing your numbers or your benchmark because you're trying to submit it to HWBot to get the verification that you actually did this. It's a whole process. So Brian's processing a lot right now. He's having to look at the temperature. He's having to think about what he's gonna to do to increase the memory as well as capturing 
everything. All right, so we're loading up into CPU-Z now. All right, and we're booted in at 12.133. We locked up at uh, 12,560. So we're just going right back in after locking up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think we just, we're at the wrong temperature. Bro, you're using Windows 7. No, no. it is Windows 10. It's Windows just 10. a Windows 10 pre-installation environment. So it's just super light on CPU. Blue screen. Mode, and we blue screen. All right, we're back in. We're over 12 immediately. Yeah. Already Something's locked up. Something's not happening. Okay. Yep. So what's the strategy now to uh, um, keep going? Well, I was having more luck booting at 12,000, so I think I'm going to go back. So liquid nitrogen overclocking, the extreme overclocking that's happening right now, is uh, for fun. It's exciting to be able to push hardware past its actual limits. For regular overclocking, like let's say you install some Lancer Neon RGB RAM DDR5 into your system, getting it from 6,400 megatransfers to 8,000 megatransfers, you can actually get more system performance. It's not just about the higher number, you can actually get better gaming FPS, you can get better CPU performance if you're trying to do things like professional applications. So there's a balance that you have to strike where you need fast speed, but then also trying to make it so that you have stability because when you're overclocking, as you've seen, things get a little <laughs> unstable. unstable very quickly. But that's why when you're purchasing RAM, you know, you want to see what it's rated for. This XPG Lancer Neon RGB kit is rated for DDR5 6400 mega transfers. So I know I can confidently go into my BIOS and set it at 6400. Just like Brian's confidently setting this one at 12,000. Very different conditions. But if you were very having. Different to buy a kit that's DDR5 8000, which is what the Lancer Neon can go up to, then you can confidently go up that high, as long as your CPU can handle it, because that's also part of it, is the Correct. memory controller on your CPU has to be compliant, even if your RAM's capable. So we're at minus 142 on the memory, minus 71 on the CPU, and we're still just trying to boot at 12,000. Yeah, we're trying to boot at 12,000 right now. We're at 6120, so you double that to be 12,240, 12,400. 12,480, we're at 12,500 now, a little bit over. So out of all of the overclocking that you've done, what what's your favorite number that you've hit or like session that you've done? This has been pretty fun, just yeah. trying to push the frequency. I was able to get, I think, fifth in the world on this stick right here, or no, eighth, I'm sorry. If I had been able to validate what I did previously, it would have been fifth. Yeah, so looking at your HW bot profile, which if you guys wanna follow what Brian's doing, you can go to HW bot and look up doomed 83 um, and you can see that with this stick of memory he he hit 6309.5 so 12619 which we've already seen past that but didn't get to validate yeah that was our first <laughs> yeah the first, first boot first boot and that's often the best boot unfortunately <laughs> so with this extreme overclocking board what what Brian's able to do is just instead of having to go back into the BIOS every time and slightly increase the frequency and then boot back into Windows just has buttons that you can play with. And what we're doing is we're just increasing the base clock, which is being multiplied for the memory frequency. We locked up at 12... 500. 500. 12, 510, yeah. How did you get into extreme overclocking? Mostly I just wanted to play with liquid nitrogen at first. I just enjoyed pushing hardware and, and playing with it. Honestly, I've been overclocking since I was about 10, but I got real so, serious in it back at 2019. Do you hold any world records? I used to have the PC Mark 10 Express world record. I still want to take that back. What's the biggest hindrance from you being able to do this every day? Is it like the cost? Is it the hardware access? A lot of it's the cost of the hardware. Hardware. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I buy most of this stuff on my own, and you know, uh, just the cost of the motherboards and processors and all that have gone up. All right, we're at 12,380 right now, locked up there. 12,390. Yeah. yeah, the Lancer Neon RGB RAM from A Data, I mean, it's doing very, very well. Again, we're top 10 already with this stick of RAM. And by we, I mean me, I did all the work. I have done all of the overclocking. It's Brian here. It's 6188. This is where we froze last time, right? Yeah. 6248. Look at us. 6264. That puts us in 13th place. 6279. 6279 was 11th place. That's where we locked up there. Yeah, it seems like it likes to boot a bit better at 12. Yeah, it does, it seems. We just have further to go. Just booting in at 12 is uh, the 38th fastest speed. Yes. <laughs> We're at 6180, that's 17th place. 225 puts us in 14th. See, it's the small little 
little jumps here that are uh, moving us up the rankings, but it's those last little ones that if are If you the... ask some people, I'm crazy for jumping that fast. <laughs> 6254, 6270, locked. We're down to minus 150. Are you trying to get the so memory colder? what I'm trying to do is, is uh, get the pot cold enough to uh, actually get rid of the latent frost effect. It actually makes the, the nitrogen react quicker, but now I've got to bring it back up to temp, which can take a little while. Okay. All right, now we're back to 138. 61.95, 62.10, 62.25. So that just increases it by 15 each time, um, typically? Yeah, well, it Blue depends screen. upon what you booted in at and, yeah. and what I've set it to. You can see the condensation building up on the pot and the plastic and even a little bit on the motherboard as well next to the buttons. You know, the buttons are all frosted over now. Ah, we're booting now. Fine. 60.60, 61.80. That puts us in 17th place. 62.40. Oh, no screen! Do they ever compete for the slowest clocks possible? Every once in a while, there's an achievement for having a certain benchmark run for 12 hours or more. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we've booted in at 6,000, 6,120, 6,180, 6,186, 6,192,6,198. Will it run Doom? No, Doom is running it right now. 62.04, that is a 15th place speed, 62.10. 62.16 puts us in 14th place. 62.46 puts us in 13th place. Being a lot more methodical this time. Slower jumps, more consistent. 62.70 puts us in 12th place. 62.75 puts us in 11th place. We're in 10th place. 62.99, locked up 6,300. All right, I mean, we're consistently booting into Windows now, which is... Finally. He's gonna try something crazy, getting it colder. All right, we're down to minus 148 on the memory. Down to minus 150 now. 6222, close to 6300 again, except for we locked wow. up at 6276. Yep. Starting over again at 12. Going for minus 150. Oh, nope. No, we need to shut it down. Okay. Unfortunately, that zero zero is too ominous. Usually that's a CPU not being recognized. Unfortunately, that's all we can get for now. Maybe we'll we'll come back fresh tomorrow. Let it sit yeah. for a little bit, try again. So, we didn't manage to get there, get the record, and our second days of trying was actually undone because it was storming here in Pittsburgh. And when you're pushing hardware like the Lancer Neon RGB to limits that have never been achieved before, conditions have to be just right. So the extra humidity in the air from the thunderstorms led to lower scores for us on the second day. So, our first attempt actually ended up being the best that we can muster at just over 6,300 megahertz or DDR5 12,600. And just for everybody who's wondering out there, DDR stands for double data rate, which is why you take the speed of the RAM 6,300 mega transfers and then double it. So it's 12,600. But that score is still enough for top 10 in the entire world for memory frequency. Again, a feat that very few people have ever achieved. I never thought I'd have RAM running that fast. And that's all thanks to one, great hardware from ADATA that's been engineered to work well, even in extreme circumstances, such as under liquid nitrogen, but also can just, you know, run regular games. And then number two, the expertise of someone like Brian, AKA Doom, who knows the specific tweaks and changes that have to be made in order to push hardware this far. What cast latency do you set the RAM to? How much are you tweaking the base clock? What voltage do you run the RAM at? All knowledge that you get through trial, error, and expertise. I have to say it was such a pleasure working with Brian. Not only is his craft incredibly well-developed, he was just a pleasant, genuine person to be around. So I hope this is the start of many more collaborations together. And again, big thanks to ADATA for sponsoring this video, Brian's trip out to our studio, and the whole adventure into getting UFD back into extreme overclocking. This is not a story I tell on videos very often, but I was actually the back-to-back -back South African amateur overclocking champion. I won two amateur overclocking events in South Africa. HW Bot put one on, and then the second one was put on by Rage. And then I was also the number one rookie overclocker in the entire world on HW Bot. Never got into the extreme stuff because I wanted to retire at the top. A data might have just convinced me we should probably should just start buying LN2 and keeping it here in the office. Michael, uh -huh. order me some more LN2, please. Okay.